Greetings everyone and welcome back to a random mini review. Today I've got a few items to show you, which you've already seen in the thumbnail, but I've had these items kicking around for many years and I figured finally is the time to cover them on the channel because people did want some more random mini reviews and I shall deliver them. So first up today, we're going to be looking at the Monster Gecko Pistol Mouse, which was released in 2005 and I'm not entirely sure how much it was retail back in 2005, but I got this in probably 2007 or 2008 for about $30 from JB Hi-Fi. Now the box looks a little something like this, which honestly looks pretty cool. It sort of just opens up and there's the mouse there. The back also has, you know, red and black going on and a glow around the mouse and stuff like that. It looks pretty cool. And then the instructions say this. I think I still have the box. It's somewhere in my garage. I don't know where it is. I'll probably have to look for it another day. To be fairly honest, that's all you got to do anyways. Here is the mouse itself. You would think that it would maybe be a light gun. I mean, for 2005 anyways, you'd see that and go, oh, well, maybe it's a light gun. You know, you hold it and off you go. Nope, it's not a light gun. It's just a standard mouse with left and right click and a scroll wheel. That's it. The scroll wheel you can click. Left click is just the trigger. There's no pressure sensing or anything. It's just press it once and that's it. Right click is underneath the trigger, which is easy to reach. And then you've got the base, which holds the main components for the laser and stuff, and the Monster Gecko Pistol Mouse FPS. I'll see if their website's actually still up. I don't think it is. The profile of it does look pretty good, and it is mimicking a Glock by the design of this mouse. I do like the red and black colorway to this. That's probably why I bought it in the first place, because of the colorway and just the uniqueness of this. Everything is made of plastic, but we do have rubber grips, and the scroll wheel is also made of rubber. Also has a lot of weight to it. It's not a lightweight mouse by any means. Flipping it around, it's pretty much exactly the same thing. You'd think these buttons on the side would actually do something, but they're just there for decoration. Same as on the other side. So it's got some stairs there. You know, you climb the stairs and stand there and go, yeah, I'm victorious, yay. And the USB cable is also about two meters in length. So what I've done is I've hooked this up to my laptop out in the lounge room and I've played a game of Doom with this. I'll splice in the footage and let you see how I use this. All right, so I've got the gun mouse connected to my laptop in the lounge room and it's so weird just trying to use this as a normal mouse i mean it's fine you can launch everything you can right click you can scroll some other people have already reviewed this before how much is it actually going for oh it's out of stock and there's no buttons to go back or anything as i've already mentioned it's just as it is but here's someone selling the mouse for 63 dollars i mean that's not too bad, I guess. So for normal use, it's definitely not that practical. But let me put Doom on and play a quick game of that and see if I can use this thing. Now, I don't have too much space to work with. And since this is only 800 DPI, I'm probably going to have a lot of troubles trying to aim, but I'll do my best. I'm in the Lazarus Labs. Let's give this a go. Oh, oh, okay. All right. So now I can switch weapons. That's easy enough. Okay. Oh, God. This feels really awkward. There we go. Maybe I can use it a little something like this. I mean, yeah, okay. Oop. Let me just say it's <laughs> it's really cumbersome at times. If I had bigger test desk, then obviously things would be a little different. But as it is, um, it's used. <laughs> It's usable to some degree. If you did use this for more than three minutes, you probably would get used to this, but otherwise this is just purely a big novelty uh, that someone decided would be a fantastic idea. I'd also do this as well. Because it's a gun, you want to aim it up a little bit higher? It just doesn't make sense. The DPI is really slow, so you'd probably have to stuff around with that. And there's no, obviously, like, trigger pressure or anything like that. You just press it and it just clicks. That's it. As I said, pure novelty. Why anyone would go out of their way to purchase a mouse that looks like this and hopes that it will improve their game is kind of a bit silly, which obviously is why this product didn't take off because I don't think there's another product out there that looks like this as a gaming mouse. It's just a hunk of plastic with a laser on it. But anyways, that's a test with the Monster Gecko pistol mouse. Let's now move on and just tear it down and see what they've put inside of it. A laser and some buttons. It does kind of feel comfortable when you are using it, but it's going to take a while for you to get to grips with using this. Oh, get to grips funny pun. It works, and for 2005, I guess it would have been a cool gimmick, but now in 2022, it's just something you display as a collection piece and go, hey, look at my weirdo mouse that looks like a Glock. But in 2005, your normal standard wired optical mouse would do exactly the same thing as this would do. It wouldn't improve any performance with gaming. It's just a pure novelty that you can just hold and go, look, 
I'm shooting, yay. But anyways, let me quickly tear it apart and show you the innards of this. And just taking the bottom off, we have a big lead weight in here, which honestly is not too surprising to see because they need a way to weigh this down. And that is definitely one way to do it. The motherboard looks a little something like this. There is a chip dislocated on the motherboard. The sensor looks fairly basic and pretty much everything on there is fairly basic. Now I'll take out all these screws and we'll take a look at inside of the gun. Wait, can I say gun? Is that illegal to say gun on YouTube now? Will I get demonetized? Probably. With all the screws removed, I'm pretty sure I can just lift it straight off. And there we go. That is the innards. Pretty much all it is, it's just a tiny little circuit board with two switches on it. The scroll wheel has two switches on either side of it, so when you do click it in, it does work. And then finally, that's all split down into the wire, and that's pretty much how that works. Basically, they've just taken apart a standard mouse and chucked it inside of a pistol-shaped casing and called it a day. I don't think they sell terribly well. If you want one, you can find them on eBay for about 40 bucks US. Anyways, I'll put this thing back together and we'll move on to the last two products. Here's the next two. I bought these things at a gift shop that opened up for about a month at my local shopping center and then closed. I got what appears to be an iPhone 4 and what appears to be a MacBook, except they're called Mirrorbook Air and the Apple logo looks a little something like that. And the same goes with this, the iMirror 4, copying the iPhone 4 box. Let me take a look at this first. Now, many of you should know now, I like mini electronics, so I bought these because they're mini electronics, except take away the electronics part. These are just pretty much pure novelties. We do have the real Apple logo stuck on there, and this is all entirely made of plastic. There's actually some certifications and stuff written on there. If you can see that, it even has a unique serial number on there. And going around it, we have the ports as well on both sides. And if you haven't already guessed by the name of these things, what these are, are just cool mirrors that break. So unfortunately the hinge is a little bit iffy in this one. It does say MacBook Air there and the keyboard's fairly detailed as well. And if I was to just take this apart, that's uh, everything. <laughs> That's the quickest teardown you'll ever see on this channel. But I have to sort of glue this back together because the hinge keeps on popping off. It's a quite cool display piece, especially next to a real MacBook Air. And finally, the iMirror 4. Oh, there's the Apple logo there, looking legit. So here's the front of it here with an iOS 5 or iOS 6 looking fake display that they've put on there. Home button doesn't work, it's just stuck down there. Here's a real iPhone 4 next to it. They got the size pretty much almost perfectly. And then going around the fake one, they've just painted on the buttons, which is fair. At the top, there's just this area where you can put a lanyard in, but it just kind of looks a little strange. The power buttons and the headphone jack are just painted on once again. SIM card tray is just painted on, and same with the bottom, it's all just painted on. But the back is where things really shine. Presenting the iPhone completely legitimate Apple logo is there as well. And how this is a mirror is this slides open, it pops up like so and you now have a mirror. But you also have this area to put questionable items in, like a postage stamp or one coin. There you go. And now you can shut that. Perfect. It doubles as a wallet. Pretty cool, isn't it? Not really, but if you like collecting weirdo stuff like I do, when I seen this many, many years ago, I thought that's really cool. I believe I bought it when I was daily driving an iPhone 4. Pretty close. A for effort. Anyways, everyone, that's all I've got to show for today's random mini review. I hope you did enjoy this one for what it was. I just figured while I'm on my break, I'll have some more videos prepared for you just to tie you over before the main uploads on the weekends. So if you do want more random mini reviews, please let me know because I have so many weird items just laying around that I can't do a full in-depth video on, but I can do something like this just to show you all. Bit of a change of pace from the usual 40 minute videos. But anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And as always, please take care, stay safe and be good people. And I'll see you all in the next video, which will be cheapo stuff most likely. Until then, take care and I'll see you next time. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.